A few weeks ago, Google released their first foldable phone, but other brands like Samsung, Xiaomi and Oppo have been experimenting with this form factor for years. Although these phones have been existing for about half a decade, I'm not a fan of their design. So instead of complaining on Twitter, I decided to make my own foldable phone using Legos. And my my, this is something that the world is not prepared for. Buckle up because we're heading towards the future! Welcome to the listening video! In today's video, I'll be showing my design of a foldable phone using Legos. And here it comes! Doesn't it look gorgeous? And obviously this is when the phone is folded, so let's open it up. So this is the standard position when it's uh, in the shape of a normal phone. But here's where the phone is unique because, well, the phone can get smaller, can get to normal sized phone, and then it can get to tablet sized. No other phone has done this, and I don't understand why. I guess it's more difficult to do it with phone components than Legos. Let's turn it around and see it, and yeah, it looks awesome. But one step at a time, so I think we should start with the cameras. Although all foldable phones cost around $2,000, their cameras are not worth that price. And to me, cameras are the most important part of a phone. So as you can see, this phone has five cameras. Obviously, this is just Legos, but if I would design a phone, I would have there be one main wide camera, one ultra wide, two telephotos, one 10x and one 5x, and then lastly, a macro camera. So not only will it have five cameras, but it will also have two flashes as you see here, two torches, and that's something that I'm, I don't think any other phone has, at least no modern phone. I mean, if it's going to be so expensive, why not have double the lights than a normal phone? And it only gets better from here. One of the main reasons why I would like to buy a new phone is because of the cameras. So instead of having to buy a whole new phone because of the cameras, this phone has a modular camera that you can change and buy for a cheaper price. So you can just deattach your current cameras and then, not that easily of course, but then you would just go and buy a new one with the latest hardware and you won't have to sacrifice paying $2,000 for a whole new phone, which works perfectly fine. These revolutionary ideas are some things that I think we deserve in 2023. Five cameras, two torches, modular cameras, these are all things that we need to have. Now let's get to the main part of the phone, it's foldable ability. So obviously it can go from a pocket sized shape into a phone sized shape. The dimensions are written here for this factor but also when it is closed and when it is fully open. Here you have the screen that you normally have in a phone, very cool. Nothing special. Perhaps the coolest part here is the hinges. As you can see, these hinges are on the screen, which isn't optical, but I mean, this, is, this was the only way I could make it with Legos. And it took me a long time to design this hinge, because you can see here where each piece is touching perfectly, but, uh, and then when it's closed like this, you see this mess, so it took a long time to go from this mess into a very nice and flat um, design. And what's happened here and here is that I, I had to glue pieces together. I know that's a sin in Lego building, but um, it had to be done. Another thing that this phone has is a fingerprint scanner to the right side. Most phones have a fingerprint scanner on the screen and Apple doesn't even have fingerprint scanners. They have a face ID. But I have been using the Poco X3 Pro for the past year and it has its fingerprint scanner on the power button. And it's so, so good because it's such a normal position where you have your thumb on the power button. So as you will take it off from your pocket, your finger is there and it will be unlocked. And that technology has been also implemented to this phone. And what about the left hand people? Well, I, I was also thinking of having another fingerprint scanner here, but um, that, that was difficult with Legos. But if I would design this phone, there would be one fingerprint scanner on each side. And that's also extra security for banking information where you use your, both your thumb and index finger to unlock your phone. So I don't understand why phones don't use two fingerprint scanners to unlock things like bank accounts and other money transactions for safer and more private user experiences. So yeah, this is a very big screen, it's a very wide screen, and then we opened it up and we got a pretty much a square, a square screen. It is fairly big, I mean, this is how it looks like with my hands on it. Again, we got very good hinges here. But one thing that is very bad with the Lego hinges is that they are very um, loose, as you can see. 
Um, but if this would be a real design, again, this is just a Lego concept design, but if this would be a real design, there would be magnets to just have them stick together. So what would you do with a square screen? I mean, there are very few games that require a square screen, and there's just as little videos that are this sized. But again, this is just a concept phone. I didn't have enough Legos to make it wider, so there's a better use for video watching and gaming. I think one of the best cases where this will be used is for note-taking or video calls. And whether it will have a front-facing camera, the same with this side, whether we will have it or not, um, I'm still not sure. Again, this is just a Lego concept phone. Because, well, it's, it also has five cameras here, and if you're going to take a picture, you can just do, do that very nicely. You can make a video. I, I think that's enough. And not only will there be screen here, but there's also there's also screen here. So both the people behind and in front of you can see what you're filming. And I think that's very important for vlogging and perhaps reading a teleprompter when recording your videos. Speaking of video recording, since this phone has these hinges, they can be used to have the most stable um, camera systems. So let's say this phone is filming me right now and you're holding it up here, there will be software and AI that will make it have the best stable um, camera usage. So you can just move it like this and it will be locked on targets without any loss of quality because modern phones, they, they have to crop in and that just makes the quality worse. But if there's hardware components moving, then you don't lose any quality in your videos. And again, I really don't know why other phones don't have this kind of mechanism because, well, it is super cool. I guess it's too expensive to make. Um, but yeah, I think this is something that is very unique to foldable phones and that they should be using. Something we haven't been talking about is this part of the phone. So when it's closed, um, it's basically the backside. Will this be a screen? Will it not be a screen? And the answer is, this will not be a screen. So why will this not be a screen? Well, first of all, you already got um, one, two, three, four faces here, and then another two faces here when it's in standard form. So that's one reason why there won't be a screen here. But the main reason why there's no screen here is that when this phone is closed like this, it is totally safe from any screen damage, and it's basically shaped like a hard brick. So what will happen is that when this phone is open, and when it's dropped more than two meters, then this phone will automatically close and have all the screens protected, and it will be shaped like a brick, just like those old Nokia phones that broke concrete. This is a much compacter shape, and there will be no screen damage. And yes, the cameras will experience damage, but again, they're modular, so you can just get a new pair of cameras if that is necessary. And I've been thinking of phones closing like this since William Osman made his video about protecting phones from fall damage. I think that this is a very good way to protect your phone. So it's been like half a decade since the headphones jacks have been removed from phones. And I'm not a fan of that. The headphones to my computers, they're wired. So when I want to use those same headphones on my phone, I want to be able to do that. And many things today still don't use a Bluetooth. Like there are old cars that's that are still required to be wired for you to connect to their speakers. So that's why we have taken back the headphone jacks and we have done it double. I mean, we got, this is the double the price of a normal phone. So let's have the double headphones, double the torches, um, double everything, double, double fingerprint scanners. I mean, this is double. <laughs> This phone should be called Double. Speaking of the name of a phone, um, please comment down below um, what this phone should be called. I have no name for it. Um, so <laughs> that would be interesting to see and perhaps I will use those one of those names to officially have a name for this phone. So let's get back to the headphone jacks. So yeah, there are two headphone jacks and if you look around, there are no charging ports. No charging ports, two headphone jacks. What's up, social clown? Have you gone mad? Um, no, I haven't. Perhaps I have, but um, we're not. this is not the video for that. So when Apple announced that they will remove the headphone jack, they made the wrong decision because many things today are not compatible with Bluetooth and they require wired audio. But one thing that doesn't require wire is charging. But here is where the phone gets at its peak. Because this phone does not use a normal charging. It doesn't use wired charging, it doesn't use normal wireless charging it uses something different. So what really happens when phones are charged? Well, there's a flow of electricity. What is electricity? It's a form of energy. What is another form of energy? Light. What's another form of light? Wi-Fi. 
You heard me right, this phone will be charged with internet and Wi-Fi. But social clone, isn't it very slow to, to wirelessly charge your phone this way? Yes, but will you mo in most cases have access to Wi-Fi? Yes, so this phone will slowly charge your battery always. And this is a much better way to handle your battery than having it at 100% and then getting that to zero and then back to 100 daily. So with this new technology, your phone will always be charged. It will always stay at a high percentage as long as you have access to Wi-Fi. I know that this technology doesn't really exist right now, but people are working on it. I don't think that we're far away from having this technology being used in our phones. So let's have this implemented here first. You, you heard it first. This phone will be only charged with Wi-Fi. Not only is this better for you, it's better for economy use where charges won't be necessary and also it will be better for the environment as there's no waste in buying chargers and as mentioned the battery it will be much better for the battery so you won't be required to throw away your phone because of the worst battery. So this phone got literally everything, it got 5 cameras, 2 torches, a modular camera, you can go from pocket size phone to normal size phone to tablet size phone, you got huge screens both on the front and back side. And when the phone is open and drops, it will automatically close, protecting the screen and having it shaped like a brick so it's compact and it's safe from any fall damage. This phone will also have two fingerprint scanners for extra security. This phone will also have much better hinges than this LEGO prototype. And these hinges will allow you to have much more stable video recording. And there's also two headphone jacks because those are still necessary. And one thing that this phone ha doesn't have is charging ports, but that won't be required because this phone is charged with Wi-Fi at all times. That's the best way to charge your phone because you have access to Wi-Fi 99% of the time. And this phone will always be slowly charging, which means that you don't have to be worried of your battery life and there's no requirements of selling and buying chargers. I mean, this phone got, has got everything. And I really hope that brands like Samsung, Xiaomi, Oppo, and Apple will include this design into their phones. But please, manufacturers, don't steal this design. And also comment down below what you would like to name this phone. What will it be called? What would be the brand name? What will be the next Samsung? I mean, comment down below. I'm really interested to see your comments. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for listening. And I hope you will listen to me another time. Goodbye. <laughs>